what's up y'all? As always, welcome to the channel. So I recently saw an Adventist church that's hosting a Hebrew tabernacle exhibit, which got me to thinking about something that the SDA church incorrectly teaches about the temple. Another one of these Adventisms, if you will, that I've talked about on the channel before. In what could be considered one of her capstone works, the story of redemption, Ellen White wrote this regarding the tearing of the temple veil that's documented for us in the gospels. The rending of the veil of the temple showed that the Jewish sacrifices and ordinances would no longer be received. The great sacrifice had been offered and had been accepted, and the Holy Spirit which descended on the day of Pentecost carried the minds of the disciples from the earthly sanctuary to the heavenly, where Jesus had entered by his own blood to shed upon his disciples the benefits of his atonement. But the Jews were left in total darkness. They lost all the light which they might have had upon the plan of salvation and still trusted in their useless sacrifices and offerings. The heavenly sanctuary had taken the place of the earthly, yet they had no knowledge of the change. Therefore, they could not be benefited by the mediation of Christ in the holy place. So the inspired pen of the SDA church claims that the tearing of the temple veil represented a change in the location of the temple work, that a sanctuary building in heaven had taken the place of the earthly and Jesus would be working in this temple as a priest dealing with sin. To no surprise, Mrs. White filters this monumental act of God through the investigative judgment and sanctuary paradigm. But is that what's in view? Did the tearing of the veil represent a change in location of the temple work that would now be taking place up in heaven? If we recall, the temple veil was the visual barrier between God and man. It was something only the high priest could enter once a year on the day of atonement and not without blood. It represented the separation that existed between God and his people, similar to Mount Sinai. But also, the veil was the representative doorway into the presence of God. After all, it was only in the most holy place that God would manifest his presence over the mercy seat. So with that in mind, in Hebrews 10, 19 through 22, we're told something rather insightful about this imagery and how it ultimately pointed to the person and work of Jesus. After telling us in Hebrews 9, 8, that while the Levitical priesthood work was going on, the way into the presence of God was closed off to the believer, the author then proceeds to tell us that the way has been opened. Notice how. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So in contrast to the Levitical priesthood work which involved the blood of mere animals, the single sacrifice of Christ by his body and blood has opened the way for all believers to enter into the presence of God. His blood, unlike the blood of mere animals, can cleanse the conscience. This is why one of the promises of the new covenant is that God remembers our sins no more. The regular sacrificing of animals was a constant reminder of a person's sins, but with the single sacrifice of Christ, that changed. But furthermore, we were told that the true curtain, the antitypical one, is Jesus Christ's own flesh. It's by being in Christ that all believers have access into the presence of God, not only a high priest. In light of this, Jesus' words in John 10, 7-9 take on even deeper significance when he tells us that he's the door, and if anyone enters by him, they'll be saved. Just like the temple veil was the representative doorway that only the high priest would enter and approach God's presence, Jesus Christ, the true door, is the way of access into the presence of God for all of his people. All of the temple imagery ultimately pointed to him, even the temple itself. The true temple is Jesus' body. The tearing of the veil was representative of the barrier between God and man being removed because the true curtain had come, of which the woven fabric veil was only a type and shadow. Its tearing was a monumental picture of the true fulfillment of the gap being bridged between God and man. With the ascension of Christ back to the Father, he entered into the true most holy place, heaven itself, to appear in the presence of the Father, bringing with him access for all of those who are in him. These words by Ellen White, which the Adventist Church upholds as divinely inspired, attempts to repair the veil that was torn by establishing a new one, what we might call the investigative judgment and sanctuary curtain. The veil still remains because the true temple and the true veil are missed. While it's right to say that the earthly sanctuary was rendered obsolete by the sacrifice of Christ, Christ, the tearing of the veil was not representative of the temple work continuing only in a different building in a different location. The temple work was a work of dealing with sin, and Jesus is the new temple, not a building in heaven. The earthly temple was typological of Jesus' body, and by his flesh,
flesh being torn and bruised for his people, we are told he put sin away at the cross. The temple work of dealing with sin, once and for all, took place in the true temple of Jesus Christ's body in his life, death, burial, and resurrection. At his ascension, he took his rightful seat upon his throne as a high priest king after this completed work, which was in contrast to the Levitical priest who never sat down because the work of dealing with sin was never finished. This is precisely what we're told in Hebrews 10, 11 through 14, which means the work of dealing with sin ceased at Calvary, where sin was put away. But according to Adventist theology, no sin was canceled at the cross. It's only where the atoning sacrifice took place. Instead of Jesus being the true temple, they've substituted in a different building in a different location where sin still sits on record. In Patriarchs and Prophets, speaking on this, Ellen White said this, the blood of Christ, while it was to release the repentant sinner from the condemnation of the law, was not to cancel the sin. It would stand on record in the sanctuary until the final atonement. So in the type, the blood of the sin offering removed the sin from the penitent, but it rested in the sanctuary until the day of atonement. So get that. No sins were canceled at Calvary. No sins were canceled at Calvary. They're stored in heaven to be dealt with in a sanctuary building where Jesus is still dealing with them. In 1844, he supposedly began blotting out sins in a second phase of the atonement. Quite the contrast to what the Bible is actually teaching. Again, one of the promises of the new covenant is that God remembers a person's sins no more. They are not standing on record in heaven. It's because the work of dealing with sin is finished and the barrier removed that Paul could boldly proclaim things like, those who are in Christ Jesus are presently seated in the heavenlies by virtue of being in Christ. It's why the author of Hebrews told us earlier that unlike the blood of bulls and goats, Christ's blood affords all believers entrance into the presence of God. What was once reserved for a single high priest is now open for all that enter through the true curtain. Jesus Christ himself. If Jesus is still dealing with sin in heaven, missing that Jesus is the true tabernacle where sin was already taken care of at Calvary, then believers cannot have access to God like this. The veil is still up and the separation still exists due to sin. But thanks be to God that the single sacrifice of Christ, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, put sin away at the cross, dealing with it once and for all, bringing access to God's presence for all of those that would come to him by faith. If you're an Adventist, we invite you to come join us for worship in the true temple. The door is open. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like content like this and you want to partner with us, access more resources, or just learn more about what we're doing, visit AnsweringAdventism.com. As always, until next time, God bless.